Hi, I'm Christopher Hanlon of Eastern Illinois University, and I'm back again with an episode of the Close Reading Cooperative, the podcast in literary analysis for English majors. And we're continuing with our little mini-series here during the spring semester uh, on scansion. Now, so far, we've been talking uh, about scansion in terms of feet that all consist of two syllables. Iams, trochees, spondees, and pyrrhics. And that makes some sense because it's easy to talk about bisyllabic feet when you're just starting out. But this should in no way be taken to imply that feet always consist of two syllables. In fact, there are plenty of feet kind of walking around out there that have more than two syllables. And I want to talk to you about some of them today. Now, a foot with three syllables is called, appropriately enough, a trisyllabic. And I'm going to give you two different kinds of trisyllabics right now. The first is a really famous one that's called a dactyl. If you want to know what a dactyl sounds like, well, just say my name aloud. Christopher. That's a dactyl. Three syllables. The first syllable is emphasized, followed by two unstressed syllables. And if you want to really hear what dactyls sound sound like when they're in meter, just recite any number of old nursery rhymes or limericks, like hickory dickory dock. That's a classic sound for nursery rhymes that almost everyone instantly recognizes, and it depends upon that dactylic arrangement of stressed and unstressed syllables. Now, one other trisyllabic foot I want to talk to you about today is what's called an anapest. If you want to hear what an anapest sounds like, say a name like Derrida. It's, in a way, it's sort of an inverse of a, a dactyl in that we have two unstressed syllables followed by a stressed one. And if you want to hear what it sounds like in poetry, well, just recite uh, that old anonymous poetry about, poem about St. Nicholas. "'Twas the night before Christmas and all through the house." Now that's a really distinctive sound, and part of what makes it so recognizable is that anapestic arrangement of stressed and unstressed syllables. So dactyls and anapests, they're not common, certainly not as common as iams and trochees, but they're out there, so be on the lookout. See if you see any in the poetry that you're assigned this week. And we'll be back next week to continue this series on scansion with the Close Reading Cooperative.